All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about roosters. So we're out here with the uh, with the suburban chicken coop, uh, kind of our small scale uh, little deal here. We've got nine chickens, eight hens, and, and one rooster uh, that stay in a little coop here in a 30, 30 by 40 area that you see behind me. And we do keep a rooster in our flock. And I did a video a few years ago on why we keep roosters in the flock. What, what, the, what is the advantage of having a rooster? Uh, what do they provide for your flock, uh, whether small or large? And, the, and I'll link to that video because there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of benefits to having a rooster. But today I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about what do you do when you have an aggressive rooster? A rooster that is maybe chasing people, chasing kids, uh, uh, chasing you, jumping on you, jumping at you, and things like that. So I will preface this video by saying this. Uh, one thing that I've learned here uh, with all these different kinds of animals, goats, pigs, uh, turkeys, uh, chickens, cows, horses, whatever it is. When you're dealing with a uh, an intact, meaning not a neutered or fixed male animal of any kind on the farm, they uh, you have to be a little bit cautious because all male animals on the farm, all male animals in nature, God has designed them for certain purposes. One of those purposes is mating or breeding, uh, and that's uh, the job that a rooster has uh, in a flock, in, in nature, as well as in your home flock. And the other is protection. Those are the two main things that, that they do for, for us and our flock. And, uh, and male animals do on the farm in all cases. That's why we keep them around. There will always be a certain amount of aggression in, in male animals. They, uh, they always establish a certain pecking order and a certain relationship with each other when there are two males coming together. Um, and and it's, it's part of just how God designed them. That's just, just, just what they are and how they're designed. So let's address the two most uh, common things that we need to address with a rooster. Number one, we're gonna talk about a rooster's relationship with the hens and how to manage that relationship to make it a, a good one for all involved. And number two, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to tame a rooster or uh, uh, mimic nature in its, in its uh, flock so that you become the, the alpha, so that you become the dominant one, and then the rooster in that case will stop coming after you or thinking that uh, it needs to, to, to prove itself to you, okay? And so we're gonna talk about that. So that'll be the last thing that we talk about. I'll show you some tricks on that. So number one, people talk to me and ask me questions or email me or comment on videos many times and they'll say, I have a rooster and it's, and it's being very mean to my hens. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, tearing their feathers off and, and doing all these things. The rooster is not being mean. The rooster is doing what God designed it to do and that is uh, to mate with the hens, okay? So that is part of, uh, of its natural behavior. Uh, generally, roosters and, and any birds for that matter, uh, we see this in our duck flock, we've seen this with turkeys, birds in nature, geese, you know, any bird, uh, the roosters will jump on the hen's back and they generally grab the back feathers behind their neck to balance themselves and then they have their, their feet on the hen's back. Generally what happens is if that's happening to one hen too often or you don't have enough hens in your flock, so you've got one rooster and maybe less than five hens or six or less hens in, with that rooster, you might see a lot of missing feathers. You're gonna see feathers on their backs that, that you know their backs can get raw, their necks can get raw, uh, and that can be a real problem. So the solution to that is not to you know dissuade that behavior necessarily, but you need to have more hens. Uh, there is some cases where one hen will, will kind of uh, get the attention of the rooster more often or it's a much more docile hen. If you have different breeds mixed together, that's often the case. One breed will be more docile and the rooster will, 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 uh, will mate with that particular hen more often. Uh, in that case, it is very tricky. You sometimes have to separate that hen out or separate the rooster out for a while, let those hens heal. You know, take maybe three or four of your hens, three of your hens and separate them out together, let them heal and, and have some kind of a rotation there. Um, or adding more hens is generally the, the correct answer uh, for that problem. So I like to keep at least least seven or eight hens with a rooster. And that's what we have here that seems to be working just fine. So before I get to how to train your, your rooster here, uh, I wanna say one other thing. There are certain breeds of roosters that are gonna act differently. There are certain more docile breeds of roosters than there are others. Uh, cochins are one of them that I know for sure. Uh, we've had uh, some cochin chickens and cochin roosters that have been very docile. Uh, some Rhode Islands and some even uh, um, bar, uh, barred rocks uh, and some of those uh, uh, buff Orpingtons and other things like that, you'll see. notice some of those roosters can be a little bit more aggressive, more protective. 
of their area and their flock. And so that can be a good thing for you if you know how to manage it. So let's grab Thor, our rooster here. We'll get to know him a little better and we'll see uh, how we can mimic some of his, uh, his, his behaviors in nature to prove that we're above him and he is below us. So this is Thor, and of course he's going to be agitated when you <laughs> when you catch him. And uh, I usually like to wear gloves just when I'm doing this with the roosters because they they like to to bite <laughs> when they're mad. So he's going to try to get away from me and peck me. And you obviously don't want to bring his head up too close to your face and things like that. So you want to be careful. Um, he's he's upset. Uh, I've just disrupted his day, and <laughs> you know this is. He, this is his area, this is his place. These are his hens that he's uh, trying to protect. And so you can see that he's just very, very upset at me uh, holding him like this. And I don't spend a lot of time in here with him. Uh, I probably could spend more time with him if I wanted him to, to come to me and be my best friend. Uh, but he's, he's mainly a farm animal here, uh, has a job to do. So, so like I said earlier, a rooster, uh, their, their job really in the wild is, is part of protection for, for the hens that they're they're in a flock with and so uh, you'll notice uh, when I was chasing him around in here trying to catch him there was a lot of uh, noise that he was making and that's generally a signal to the other hens and a call that there's something chasing him that there's some danger that there's something that's irritating him or, or causing him stress uh, and that's a warning sign when we see predators are in the area they make a lot of noise and the hens and him will all go hide usually and, and get undercover and so that's part of his job all right see it's all good. I've also seen this behavior in hens as well. When you disrupt them and catch them, they want to get away, obviously, and they're scared. And so they'll peck at you and things too. So with any chicken, you want to be careful. If you have a rooster that is being aggressive or coming at you, in fact, they're a lot easier to catch when they come at you because you can just walk in there. They'll generally puff up their feathers around their neck, as you can see that he did. They'll generally walk around in front of you and then they'll jump at you. And they try to, to get you with these spurs. This is a spur. It is pretty sharp. Uh, you can clip these if you'd like. To, it makes them a little bit safer. It's not going to hurt them if you just clip the tip off that so it's not so sharp. So that's one thing you can do to help protect, especially younger kids and things. These can be dangerous animals even though they're smaller. I mean, this is a, a six or seven pound bird, so compared to me, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid of this bird. It can, I can just swat it away with my hand. I can stick my foot out and stop it. Really, really, it can't hurt me. I mean, it can try to, unless I'm unaware and it jumps on my face or something. Now for kids, this can be a real danger. They're right at the right height where the rooster can really get into their face and scratch them or hit an eye or do some real damage to a child, say under 10 years old. And so that's where you really want to take precaution and be be careful with with these animals so how do you make the roosters tame you can see when I came in here he wanted nothing to do with me he ran into all the corners he alerted his hens he made a bunch of noise but he was not gonna come at me he used to uh, I would walk in here previously and, and the barred rock rooster they used to have I, as soon as I would come in here he would run right towards me and he had no fear of me at all because he wanted to establish dominance over me so how do we resolve that well we have to mimic the behavior that two roosters have together so generally what the roosters are going to do in in nature or if you put two roosters together they're going to fight with each other until one of them can establish dominance the, the dominant rooster will jump on the other's back now i'm not hurting him in any way uh, he's obviously <laughs> he's obviously still 
um, not like does not want to be held. But what the roosters will do is they'll they'll get right on top of of the other rooster and they'll establish that dominance. And then they'll they'll take their beak and they will force the rooster's head down. They'll force that rooster's head right down in the ground. And again, I'm not hurting him or anything like that. But this is a position of of submission. This is a position that shows this rooster that I am in charge, that I am the one that is dominant over him. And whenever we get in a scruffle together, whenever he tries to come at me, this is what's gonna happen. And he remembers this. You only have to do this once or twice. I'm just gonna kind of hold him down here for maybe 30 seconds or so. Just kind of hold his head gently down. He's, he's uncomfortable, but he is submitting to me. He's not struggling or anything like that. So he knows that I'm in charge. Now, if you have a wife or other kids or things like that, I'd recommend that you bring them out and have them here with you and also show them how to do this. Obviously make sure they have long sleeves on and gloves because they're, you know, an agitated rooster is going to peck at you and things like that. And you don't want to get scratched or anything, but teach them to do the same thing as well. He needs to learn that all the human beings that are around here in the yard or up in his pen or anything like that, that we're in charge and he is not. Another trick is just spending time with the rooster. So if you come out every day and you, and you kind of catch them, and you spend a little bit of time, just hold them. They kind of like to be held kind of snugly and pat the back of their, their feathers here or on the back of their neck. Again, it seems that this back of their neck area is kind of the, the sensitive spot. And if they allow you to have control of that, it kind of puts them to sleep. Like you can just, especially with our hands, we can pick them up and just pat them on the back of the neck and they'll, they'll fall right asleep after a few minutes. And so if you come and do that with your rooster as well, you're kind of building that relationship with them and they'll be much more docile. Uh, I, again, like I said, I don't really come out and spend a lot of time with him, but I have come out here when we first got him a few times and I kind of just caught him and put him down to the ground, held his head down for a few seconds, then let him go. And then I would walk around in here a little bit more and maybe he'd come back at me again. And I would just catch him, put him down, you know, hold his head down like that. And I did that, I think, two or three times with, with this particular rooster, and he's never never come at me or even thought about it again. And that's, that was last year almost, I think, that that, that happened. That was probably eight months ago. And so uh, he, he's learned that, uh, that I'm above him, and he won't, uh, won't come at me anymore. So All right, so we're going we're gonna to let Thor go. So say goodbye to everyone, Thor. I know this has been fun for you. It's been fun for me. One of the things that uh, was really frustrating for us when we first got roosters out here was my girls, my, my two daughters, or actually all three of my daughters and my wife, they didn't want to come outside when we had a Rhode Island rooster. And he would just, he would just torment them. He would chase them around and scare them and they would carry sticks around the yard and everything. And so uh, I had to figure out how to remedy that situation. And, and, uh, and really this is the only thing that I have found that will that will really teach those roosters who's boss and, and what it is. You don't need to hurt them or anything like that, but it definitely teach the, teaches them who's above them. But if I come out here and I do this with the rooster, and the rooster may not come at me again, but if my younger daughter comes out here seven or eight years old, he's still gonna come after her because he doesn't know that where her position is. He's trying to figure that out. And so she also has to be part of this process um, and, and I need to, to be able to make them comfortable around the roosters with, you know, protective gear, just, just as a caution. Um, but uh, we want to we teach that rooster that everybody in the family is, uh, is over them and that they're not the boss around here. So, so hopefully that helps for you guys out there that have roosters. The by far the most common question or comment I get about roosters, people have, have had as kids were attacked, people have been attacked by roosters, people have, you know, share all these stories, uh, true stories I'm sure that definitely can happen. And I think that if you spend some time with a rooster this way and establish that relationship that you could, you could prevent a lot of that from happening. Again, we don't trust 100%, but we definitely can, can help to, to make that relationship a little easier. Share this video out for anybody that has roosters. Maybe they're struggling with that. I'd, I'd love to, hopefully whatever I said here can help somebody out in, uh, in enjoying the flock of, of chickens that they have a little better. Uh, so I'd love that. Don't forget to hit thumbs up, of course, on the video and subscribe to the SSL Family Dad channel if you want to follow along with whatever we have going on around here. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.